me just watch. I love this job. Rainfall. All right, hi, I'm Chris Searles, and I'm so happy to share this with you. It's the first video collection I have of rainmaking with trees where I've just shot from beginning to end. It's not a perfect video, but um, what you'll see in it is the stages of three days. I make numerous predictions throughout this that actually do come to pass. I'm also going to release all of the footage in the archive, and I will release a longer version of this video in about a week that has a little more of the whole experience. This is a, hopefully the short version for anybody and everybody who wants to see the sort of proof in the pudding. So in the next 30 minutes or so of this little movie, you're going to see about two days of watering over two and a half days. Initially I started watering because when I went outside on Valentine's Day, I could feel on my skin that there was the potential for rain to come. And I wanted to see how small an amount of water can I use. So I went out and spritzed and it was too small. The second day, we did get a light spritz of rain that morning for about half an hour. So I went and watered again to try and encourage it more. We got a spritz that afternoon, but then no rain that evening. By the afternoon of that day, I had figured out that I needed to do deeper watering. So I come and go a little bit in the video. I'm, I'm working from home, but then I go to do some meetings and I come back. And as I'm driving in and out of the larger area, I can tell that I need to do the trickle watering, which actually, if you watch the video, the introduction to rainmaking with trees, it's described correctly. And I did essentially this incorrectly to see what would happen. There's a longer story there. And then on the Friday morning, the 16th, I wake up at 4 a.m. and there's rain in the forecast and that's awesome. So I go outside to feel the air and then come in, wait to see what's gonna happen. When no rain has fallen by about 6.30 a.m. on Friday, I start spritzing again try and encourage it. That boosts, I think, the rain forecast up to 100% between 9 and 10 a.m. on Friday. But then I go outside and predict correctly that rain is not going to fall between 9 and 10. And I come back in the afternoon and do more trickle watering at the trunk. And then finally, um, at about 5.50 p.m., I do this technique that's hard to explain that's just a very focused version of trickle watering and the spritzing and it catalyzes and we get a little bit of rain and so this video is going to show all of that progression and it's a good parallel to the rain making with trees video because it shows you how things kind of come up and down throughout the process and then also relates to the bigger ideas that are talked about in there that you have to have good supply in the air and that when you trickle water at the trunk when you put 95% of your water balance there, you get this deeper result of rain catalyzation. Also, I should say, all of the data that's shown in these screenshots is from the iPhone, which is the National Weather Service and the National Oceanic Administration and the Weather Channel all combined through local weather stations and satellites. And so that's our reference point for this. It's a pretty good one. I should also show one of the biggest questions is always how much water did you use and what did you get back? I don't know exactly what we got back. It's trace rain. It's one of the least impressive rains I've captured on camera, but I would say normally you get back at least four times what you put in when you generate rain correctly. That's just a pretty broad guess. In this case though, I put in somewhere in the range of 270 gallons over those two and a half days. And then we got rain for about three and a half minutes over at least four acres. All right, with all that said, I hope you enjoy this pretty short video that shows rainmaking with trees. Okay, it is just after 1 p.m. on Valentine's Day. And I just took the snapshot that you see there. There's absolutely no rain in the forecast. Okay, this air, outside of the envelope of our house doesn't feel susceptible to rain. But inside of the envelope, I just felt it. So basically right there, there's a density to the moisture in the air here that I think wants to catalyze into rain today or by tomorrow. And so I'm gonna take that hose, I'm gonna water for 
maybe 15 minutes on both sides of the house to my conifers and live oaks. And um, we're gonna see what happens with the atmosphere and the, specifically the clouds above. Okay, this is what I'm doing. Into the air, onto the trunks of these live oaks and the conifers. So this is the other side of the house. No giant old growth trees, but lots of tree inventory. So I'm really going for conifers today. See what happens. I can see greening intensifying across the landscape already a little bit. It's now about 1.40 on Valentine's Day. I just took snapshots. It says partly cloudy. What we've got is definitely just clouds. No blue. That seems to be pretty broad, not just right overhead. So even in the distance, the phone makes it look a little bit blue, but it's more of a covered sky all the way around. Yeah, it's, there's really no blue cutting through on its own. So wherever the weather stations are, they're not quite close enough to this place. And then also, yeah, circulation has increased as I come this way. It immediately has increased. That tree, this baby right here. Love this guy. He's been hanging in there quite a while. One last thing I should say. These conditions when I came out here were prone to transitioning to rain making, not ready to make rain. So I'm experimenting with, is that correct? Can we kind of bring some precipitation just to this house? Can we bring precipitation back into the forecast? Cause it was in yesterday for like Friday or maybe it was Sunday, a few days from now. And, or can we see some even larger effect? Will the system be ready and want to, and have the capacity to catalyze from all that moisture hanging out above a release I don't know I don't know so yesterday I came out here convinced that there was rain potential and it is actually dropping on me right now it's it is sprinkling on me right now. I'm not gonna show up, but you can see tiny dots, dits, moisture. So that's good. Didn't do what I thought might happen, which is actually drop water. But uh, it's interesting, we have this line where the moisture collects in the rocks. Those are our neighbors with their incredibly awesome little doggy. Hi, buddy. 
Hey, Hal. How you doing? Doing good. Good to see you. I heard him squeaking, but I couldn't. Okay, it's about nine o'clock. We talked for a nice 20 minutes or something. And we did, while we were standing out there, feel slight rain. So it worked. Again, there's no rain in the forecast. There's no, I mean, slight, slight rain. But there's no rain uh, predicted at all. And yet you can feel it in the air here. So I'm gonna do more watering in a couple of minutes. And I bet you we get something this afternoon. <sighs> I can smell it. Um, you know, this kind of stuff, you can't quite show it with a foam, but I'm getting little, little bits of moisture. And I can just feel the heavier, air is heavier and wetter here. So, all right, let me try it. Now I'm gonna take this hose and do more strategic watering on some different trees. This one, this one, and this one, and that one, <laughs> and one other one over there in this one. But now I'm gonna go down lower and kind of let it lead me. Okay, so I'm using the light spray setting or a lighter spray setting. I just have this hose nozzle with a little Attenuator. And I'm getting the stomata on the conifers wet, even on this broken branch, as well as the trunks. Because I have seen already in practicing, not in the literature specifically, although I bet Makarieva talks about this. The effect appears to be that, in to me right now, and I could be wrong, 100% wrong, but it, it appears that the stomata of the conifers are what drives rainfall events in the cold months. And the stomata of the deciduous trees is what drives atmospheric interaction rainfall events in the hot months. And so I'm just really trying to give them the resource that they're accustomed to having. We put it back and they're interested in systemic well-being. They've they live as individuals, but they function in this intelligent systems way. You can smell it and feel it in the air now. There's what I would call tree breathing going on. But that color of white is a, I want to drop water light up, up, up above. So we'll just see. The experience I had yesterday is that the overall sky outside of the envelope was too dry. But then uh, just now, as Hal and I stood out in his yard driveway, outside of our envelope here, we got very light rain on us. All right, so I did about 20 minutes of watering. Most of it very light. Sky's changing. We'll see what happens. I'm gonna do now uh, more over on this side, which is the upwind side. So it's maybe 15 minutes from being done. Okay, I'm in the other side of the yard now. This is the other, other side of the house. Here we go. Coming out here to one of our bigger pairs of oaks. It's also next to the third oak. These are not great big trees. But they do have really awesome canopies. They are receded right now because of the, the winter. Live oaks are definitely not, not not deciduous. They just drop their leaves at a different time of the year. They also recede in the winter and they also recede in drought. And they also change rapidly when irrigated in the summer. They can come into fluorescence quickly. I've basically been focused on live oaks in Texas much of about, I think, six months of field work. You know, hours every day staring at them and, and watering them and seeing how things respond and behave. Uh, anyway, what I'm noticing is, um, yeah, that these trees are very dynamic. And then the same thing with cedar or ash juniper. 
All right, as you can see, the forecast has not changed, but about five minutes ago, I got the, one of the best indicators, which is the lights change is how I describe it. It's like click, the sun gets strategically blocked. It looks more stormy to the naked eye, potentially. It looks like rain down there. It's already coming. It feels like we could have something pulled down. And yet we've got right above this break and the arc of uninterrupted sky. Which looks more menacing again to the naked eye. So I'm, I'm sort of on the edge of the envelope of the house here. And now I walk in the envelope. The first thing I get is the air is different. This tree got saturated mostly. Five oaks back here. Got some water and some trunk and some leaf. We've got gentle breezes that they feel, birds are real happy right now. They feel like uh, the breezes feel more like gentle sighs than winds which sounds like a personification because that's the closest analogy I can come to. So I'm going to go indoors, but if I were to be out here for 30 more minutes and just sort of be with the place, enjoy its pace, subtle breezes and so forth. I would notice that the wind is more of a gentleness moving through the landscape than a push. I think it's gonna happen. I think we're at like 80, 80 to 95 likelihood, per, percentage likelihood by tomorrow morning. And you can see it's getting loomy. A couple minutes later, it's blown in. Stormy clouds, not forecast all right i'm driving away there's still no rain projected i think if it's gonna do drops today it'll be in the 1 to 3 p.m time but then i've often been off by compiles about that if it's at another time it'll probably be in the early hours of the morning for it but I'm standing in the driveway and we're getting little bits of moisture different quality than this morning but I'm also I guess in the envelope let me go yeah lots of it my hands are getting rained on very gently gotta find a tool that can measure this not out here as much Yeah, cooler, moister air. Here. So we'll see, I've got a different afternoon than I had planned. I may do some, some drip watering. It's gonna be hard to resist. Yeah, it's 3.38. And doing a few buckets. One, two, over there, three, four, five, six. This is just a fill bucket. Seven, eight. So that's 40 gallons in these slower drips. And uh, yeah, I'm just changing tactics because now it's really feeling like it's not going to happen again. <laughs> so uh, yeah.
experimenting and learning. We have transpiration, but we don't have energy moving things and we don't have moisture increasing in the air. So I don't feel confident now. We'll see. Okay, once again, driving out, it's just after 5 p.m. And we just have this non-active, very I think less than 50% chance, likely. The quality of the air has not converted yet to imminent rain. Well, one more little thing. The sunset's not for about two hours and 15 more minutes, and there you go. See, people are already driving with their lights on. And that's a bit of a Texas thing. But also, automatic lights are on on some buildings. So here comes another person with their lights on. So like, <laughs> this isn't normal for 5 p.m. for people to be driving with their lights on. Anyway, look at that, car after car after car with the lights on at 5 p.m. because of the darkness. It's 4.59 a.m. I just came outside and you can feel it. You can feel it, the possibility of rain in the air. Non-existent for several days now, 30 and 40% chance this morning, between five and seven. And um, I don't think it's gonna fall. It's not quite thick enough. But I came out and I, you know, hey, this feels different. And then I look at the meter and there it is. Okay, I can't really see that well because I poked myself in the eye yesterday doing watering. But as you can see, the rain percentage is up to 70% now. So I'm running outside, do a quick spritz, see what I can get going. I'm in the backyard and I left the oaks up by the bedroom side and the cedars. So now, it's sort of stage three if I needed it. So I've gotten the biggest cedars on either side of the path and I ah! <laughs> can't see, I shouldn't walk. Okay, now I'm down in the lower field and I am doing stomata. And I'm just going to take this hose as far as I can go. And this is like the, now the, the lever, the lever ridge. And I don't know yet. I've gotten, I wouldn't say indicators. I've gotten good signs. Some nice cool breeze, but not much. And mostly just nice oxygen, crisp, clean, refreshing oxygen. But. It doesn't look like it's going to fall. It really doesn't. It looks too thin to generate rain. But it did say 70% chance of rain <laughs> to the area a moment ago after saying absolutely no chance of rain. Okay, 6.47 a.m. Rain chance now down to 50%. That's not unusual. Uh, it's still way more than yesterday, right? Here we go. It's working. I mean, there's there's respiration happening out here. I just got a good breeze of both better oxygen and cooler air. I can feel it building, but we don't have gray heavy anywhere, really. So that's what kind of has to happen.
Okay, well that's exciting. So, uh, ah, I'm walking out for the first time. It does feel like it's gonna fall. It says 100% rain at nine o'clock. We'll see. Sensing the air. And the sky does not have heavy gray, as far as I can see, just from this limited kind of 360. But anyway, dun dun dun. dun. We'll see what happens. Okay, it's uh, nearly 9.30. We never got rain, not a drop. There is now moisture in the air in a different way though. It's a little bit thick. So I moved through things. The envelope is definitely bigger than just the yard. So come out the side of the envelope. But it's really low, low level energy of circulation. It's the other thing is, there's not much moisture still, and it's not very close, and it's, there is not a single thick gray cloud anywhere. So it, I just, it's not gonna fall. It's almost definitely not gonna fall. I don't claim to know everything. I just am observing patterns. I mean, how could you know everything? So pattern-wise, it's not gonna fall based on my experience so far and what I, understand intellectually from the science okay so it's not gonna fall but what's interesting is the forecast shifting and shifting so radically while the sky quality remains the same Okay, we're back to about 1.30 p.m. No rain in the forecast, but there's a huge supply of rain south of San Antonio, um, east of San Antonio, that whole region. And we do have some cumulus accumulations. Um, and we have still somewhat silky air. So just on a lark, I'm gonna go ahead and try and work over here and then fill up buckets while I'm doing that and just go again with 40 or 50 gallons, go further into this, this forest and see what we can compound. We've had this going all day, the sort of dance with the clouds going over the sun. So who knows? I don't, I still don't think we're there. I just don't think there's enough moisture in the air to create rainfall, but I'm going to keep playing around because we already got that hundred percent chance forecast. I wonder why. It is 157 and it just flipped. It's subtle, but um, we got the, the glinting light. As I'm taking the, the hose, I'm giving the exterior cuticle or whatever the forestry people call it enough water until I feel something in my own body relax. Direct, gentle pressure, pushing water into the bark. And often, right now, of course this is a live oak, not a cedar, but either one, often we're getting really strong circulation right away. And I heard the indicator a minute ago, it made me think, okay, it's gonna happen tonight. And that is the sound of a jet far, 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 far away. It's like uh, the sky opens up in a different way. Okay, now there's a really nice breeze. That was oxygen. That part of that tree really responded, this baby. And this technique right now, I think it has the power to 
change the way the moisture is released by the trees. And then, <clears throat> so that's gotten saturated deeply, more deeply, but gently. And the drip, gonna do the trunk on that one on my way out. Um, is that all the buckets? Yeah, that's about eight buckets. So I don't know, we're, I'm getting a response and I sense the, again, the glinting, the darkness is coming. And I heard the sound and I got a little bit of soft air, silky air and clean oxygen. So it's, it's clipping along, we'll see. Now we are getting larger scale circulation. Like the winds are broader, thicker over the landscape. They're not just uniquely cool breezes. They are like washing over the entire acre. And it happens in a gentle way. It happens very much in the way the... Aha, there we go. There's our gray. There's our rain clouds. See what I mean? Boom. And uh, we'll see what happens. It's a wind that feels really good. It's just so pleasant. And then it's so gentle as well. Like if you could choose the wind, this would be your wind. Okay, it's just after three. The air feels too dry. The air feels too dry to be in the canopy. The moisture doesn't look thick enough. It's too dry. Now it's 3.09 and we actually have darker, darker light. So the clouds got heavier. You can see it actually, right ahead, overhead. That I can't predict. Now the air does feel different, it feels wetter, heavier. So they're working on it. It is 3.51. We've got a grayer, trashier color. So the way I think of it, like darkening gray and brown-ish sky. Get out of the envelope, the brown goes away, but very effective sunlight cover. Very interesting cloud development now. More solid. It's thick moisture in the overcast sky. The breaks are gone in the sky. Now it's completely covered in clouds all the way 360 in the back wall. I'm saying this. Triple check. Okay, yeah, you can see. Really nice. Totally cloud covered sky with stuff developing. And uh, just gonna kind of call it there for now. I need to get inside and do some more work. Okay, it's about 5.30 p.m. There is a little bit of drop droplitage again in the envelope. Too small to really be anything other than my hearsay. But boy, does that look like rain. Man, that is a serious density. It's pretty getting much all the way down to the horizon there. Yeah, that's, uh, that's good news. And then it goes away on the other side there. 5.50 p.m. It is a little darker than normal. And it's building. Over us a little bit more. Yeah, it's back. 60% chance of rain at six. So I'm gonna go ahead and try and help just a little bit. bit. I think I know what to do. All right, 6.06. I am picking up the last of what I did. I'm gonna buy these bagged 
materials. I like to put water in them and try to get all the stuff out at least once with a little bit of effort and not just throw them away. So I filled up a bunch of those, maybe a cup for each bag. So really not much water. And then it was on the spritz setting. A couple of strategic places. And what I've done is pinball over to you now the eastern side of the house. I was on the western side and gone further into this part of the little forest grove. Ah, we're getting rain. Boom, there it is. And um, major winds coming across. Don't believe me, just watch. And now we got rain. But a bing. There's a good point. <laughs> I can't find a good angle to show the rain. You can hear it though, right? Love this job. Rainfall. On forecast. Now, I'm not gonna be able to parents. I'm down. I get to reveal myself. Had to see what that looked like. I'm sure it's off. <laughs> oh man, dig it. Just gonna stand out here and get wet for a little bit. Let's see that guy run his chipper for a little longer. Yeah, we got rain over here. Oh yeah. Light, nice rain. And game changing. And now it's stopping. And um, so that's all we get, probably. That's way better than none. Ah, the sound of rainwater. So it didn't take 500 gallons. I think 500 gallons would have brought more rain. You know, it's like if you just increase the resource, the, the way it can link to this resource of this massive amount of moisture in the sky and this massive amount of moisture that is inside of these creatures to keep them alive, but will cycle between and amongst soil, vegetation, air. The stationary life and the atmosphere. But man, is it different now? Again, it changed the system probably from what the forecast was. This thing's still collecting. We're almost up to seven and a half minutes. So it's it's collecting water for minutes and minutes after. That's a good analogy for how valuable a small rain is to life. This time I really kind of did it, you could say half-assed. And um, just tried to do a little teeny bit of the right things based on a sense that it could happen. And it did. So I know we can grow from that understanding a bunch of people that know when and what to water as well as better use of our technology and less grinding cutting mowing and eroding of our own life support system